Why, hello there, and good and talk to you all, and welcome to a brand new episode of The Fripp and Frank in Show. I am your host, Dr. Weiser Fripp, and with me here is my boy, my creation. Oh, and I am Frank N. Stein. So, welcome to this month's podcast, uh, where every month we have a specific discussion in the genre of horror. So, Frankie, my boy, what is the subject uh, this month? Oh, werewolves, master. Ah, yeah. Yeah, werewolves. Uh, The supernatural creature that is active in the light of the full moon every month. And, of course, you should know if you're a horror fan that a werewolf is either a man or a woman that can shift into... A wolf-like creature in the light of the full moon every month. Usually it's three times a month or once a month. Uh, Master, what about when werewolves turn into full, complete wolves? Yeah, I I, I don't get that. Why it sometimes is like a werewolf turning into a full, complete wolf. Because to me, a werewolf is a creature that stands up right with black fur and a wolf-like head and claws. But, uh, yeah, in, like, uh, the Twilight series or, or like, uh, True Blood or the Vampire Diaries, they look like standard wolves, you know? And to me, that is not what a werewolf should look like. No offense to your fans of those uh, series. But to me, a werewolf should at least be big, like... Uh, like an American werewolf in London? Well, yeah, that's a decent enough werewolf. It's all animatronic, but uh, it's still it's a good enough werewolf movie. I mean, it doesn't look like a normal wolf, but yet it still looks like one. Um, you know, I mean, yeah, it walks on all fours, but it looks like it could stand. But don't forget, though, that film is over 30 years old, and the effects weren't as good as they are now but the effects were good enough in An American Werewolf in Paris. Yeah, An American Werewolf in Paris, they were good. The CGI, too, very cheesy now. They haven't really stood the test of time like the predecessor has. So, um, tell me, Frank and my boy, what do you know of the werewolf creature? Well, Master, I know that um, in, in, it's something you showed me in Greek mythology, that Lycaon... Um, tried to make Zeus eat some human, and uh, Zeus turn him into one. Yeah, th- that is one take of the werewolf myth. Um, but for our listeners here, here's a fun fact to you. Do you know that the whole silver bullet thing was not introduced until a 1935 film? I can't remember what it was now. But, um, yeah, it wasn't until then people started to use the silver bullet thing. Um... Also, um, before that, it was Mercury that seemed to put old, old Lycon down. Um, also, we, you know, the werewolf creature, I find these days, is quite underrated. It does not get the attention that the vampires get. I mean, we have a lot of vampire shows, but no, I'd say we don't have enough werewolf shows. Oh, there's that Teen Wolf Master, you know, that series. Yeah, that was good, you know. I mean, I don't think we ever fully saw the werewolves in their full wolf form, or we might have. I don't know, but still, I I much preferred it if they would turn fully or something, instead of growing the furry beards and the long pointed ears. Um, but Master, what about True Blood? Ah, that is okay, but the werewolves, they kind of make them like the shapeshifters. You know, where they can only shift into one edible? Yeah, master. They can only shift into one animal. Um, do you think they should have been more like werewolves from Underworld? Yeah, yeah, I do. I do think so, my boy. Underworld series. But what about the werewolves in, like, uh... Scooby-Doo, Master, they can turn in the full moon, but it's cartoony as well. Yeah, well, they have to keep that, you know, quite appropriate because of, uh, 
you know, the, um, the children's program and that. Uh, you were saying about the werewolves in the Underworld series, though, Frankie, my boy. Um, uh, for our listeners, apologies. Uh, we experienced a minor technical error. It's a, it cut off for some reason, but hopefully it is back up and running now. Um, so, yeah, the vampires and the werewolves in the Underworld films. Well, uh, uh, in the Underworld films, the werewolves do not turn back to the human state. Uh, they stay as their uh, wolf form, and the lichens um, are like in in Underworld Rise of the Lichens. We find out that um, that um, Lucian, the first lichen, was a natural birth from two werewolves, and he had the ability to transform at will. That is what makes them different in that. But that is just another take on the werewolf myth. Oh, I see now, Master. I still like them werewolves in Scooby Doo. Yeah, yeah, Scooby Doo. <laughs> yeah. But, Master, the werewolves in Supernatural, I'm not very impressed by them. They don't seem to grow much fur, they just get the teeth, the eyes, and the claws. Yeah, I know, they seem to do so. I mean, I like the show Supernatural, but. Yeah, the werewolves are... I'm not very impressed by. Um, but if anyone is listening to this podcast, uh, you know, um, if you know anything better on the werewolves in Supernatural, please tell us uh, in a letter or email or something. Um, also, we have um, werewolves, the werewolf from Ginger Snaps. Uh, that is a film I recently showed you as well, my boy. Oh, yes, Buster, it was with that Catherine Isabel lady when she's slowly turning into a werewolf. Uh, she's like going through puberty or something, isn't she? Yeah, yeah, for puberty. And she is slowly turning into the lichen beast. And they did a sequel to this. Uh, Catherine Isabel only had a cameo in this one. Uh, Ginger Snaps 2 Unleashed. Uh, it's had that girl in it from Morph and Blackmaster. Yeah, yeah, Tatiana Maslany. Uh, but that is... Yeah, Morph and Black. We're not here to talk about that. That is in the category of science fiction and cloning. Um, but... Um... Uh, yeah. We are... Are here talking about, uh... The werewolves. And in the second film, Bridget is cursed, and she is slowly turning into the werewolf beast. Oh, master, and, and at the end, doesn't she turn all the way? Yeah, yeah, she does. Uh, there is also the third installment, which is a prequel. It's a trilogy, but the third movie is titled Ginger Snaps the Beginning, where... Uh, Catherine Isabel and what's her name reprise well don't reprise their roles but they play like the ancestors of them and we, we see a lot of the werewolves again I mean it's not my favorite one I much prefer the first film uh, the second film was okay but it kind of bored me a little being in the mental asylum oh Dr. Purcell loves working in that doesn't he master yeah he does we ought to get him on the show at some point Oh, that would be delightful. I'm sure he'd like it, too. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure he will, would. He does listen to this show in his free time, I think. Okay, um, other things in the uh, werewolf genre of horror. There is also you know, remakes in some, like they're about to uh, remake um, an American werewolf in London. With the blessing of John Landis, who wrote and directed the original, his son is going to uh, write and direct this remake. And uh, also, we um, you know we saw the Wolfman get remade in um, twenty ten. Uh, in this one, though, it wasn't Lon Chaney Jr. It was Benico del Toro. Um, I do like the remake. Surprisingly, I mean the remake is quite good. I remember watching the remake, and I found it qu well the original. I found the original film quite boring, but because I can't sleep or don't feel any of those functions needed in the natural human state, uh, I just 
thought it was boring. Yeah, it is quite slow pace, and it is only 75 minutes long, the original. Uh, but I got through it quick enough. Um, also, um, we have the film, the 2010 remake, which was fast paced, but also slightly longer. Uh, we also had other supporting acts in this. I mean, in the original, we had Bella Lugosi appear in it. In this one, we had uh, Anthony Hopkins, Hugo Weaving, and Emily Blunt, which was quite nice. And there's uh, another werewolf film that we watched that was in Spanish called Werewolves, Attack of the Werewolves. Yeah, my boy, Attack of the Werewolves. Um, this film is a Spanish film for people who are listening. It's a Spanish film and, yeah, we, uh, um, the, it's just like, it's a comedy horror. It is like Shaun of the Dead meets, uh, like, Doghouse or something and... Um, it also has a lot of werewolves in. It must have, in Doghouse, they weren't like werewolves or anything. They were zombie women. Zombirds. I know, Franken, I was just setting an example for the film that we are talking about here. Okay, um, so yeah, the werewolves in that look pretty decent. You know, I mean, every single franchise of werewolves has uh, their own different rules. I mean, you know, they all they either turn on the full moon or they don't. I mean, in the Vampire Diaries, you you can't get the curse by a bite or a scratch from what I have seen. Uh, apparently, you are born with the werewolf gene, and if you kill someone, um, it activates the werewolf gene, whether it is accidental or not. Don't they have hybrids in that with half vampires? Yeah, just like in the Underworld films, there's Michael who is a hybrid uh, between the werewolf and the vampire. But, um, of course, how they can transform at will is very plausible for me. Yeah, because it's like when they can walk in the sunlight, their werewolf half is protecting them from burning. When they can transform at will, that is also the vampire half sort of, you know, controlling that. Yeah, very good, Franken. You have been learning well, haven't you, my boy? Yeah, yes, Buster, I know. <laughs> um, what, what else um, with the werewolves as well? Um, werewolves, I do enjoy the uh, that werewolf film with Dee Wallace in. Oh, The Howling. Yeah, that is a good werewolf film before they built the franchise and turned it into piss. Um, you know, to our listeners, um, when I mean piss, that is my way of saying it's a terrible film or something. But the first two were good. I enjoyed. But then the third one, that was okay, but what the fuck are they talking about? Marsupial werewolves. I mean, down under, yeah, because it's like Australian. Marsupials are howling free. Or, in my word, the howling try, because I'm in German. Um, but um, the howling 2 and the howling 1 are good. I do enjoy the transformation sequences in the howling. Also, the how they have the werewolves sort of like stand right and looking like monsters and stuff. Yeah, what about that old transformation sequence at the end of the film when Dee Wallace turns? Yeah, that is very, uh, in that's a very memorable sequence. I do enjoy that scene. Master, do you ever find werewolf films kind of sexual? You know, like when you see a female werewolf turn back into a human state, you do feel kind of sexually aroused a bit. <laughs> Franken, maybe as a teenage child I might have, a teenage boy or man, but uh, I'm about 76 years old, you know, I'm I'm quite old now for that kind of thing. Uh, but if you do have any urges that you can't explain or feelings or anything, then, you know, we can talk about it, you know, when we're not podcasting, okay, boy? Oh, I see, Master, because we don't need to share like information like that with our listeners, do we? No, no, we do not. Okay, so let's get uh, back to the subject at hand. Oh, 
Yes, okay, Master. Uh, Master, what about the program being human? Ah, yeah, being human. Um, now, being human has had two takes. It's had the original British version, and then they've had... Well, I don't really consider the American version like a, a remake. I consider it sort of like an Americanized version of of the film, like of the series. I can't explain it, but it's like the the creatures in it try to be like the three misfits we see in the series, but uh, but it's sort of slightly altered. I mean, the werewolves in Being Human, the UK version. Uh, animatronic and uh, a man in a whale suit, which look good. I have to say, they look good. They improved them by series two because they had a bigger budget. But yeah, I I do like the whales in the British being human. We don't get to see them active as much as I would like to see them. Yeah, master, why is that? We don't get to see the werewolves for uh, you know a long time, and you know and. Some episodes, they don't even transform at all. I know. Uh, I think it's because, like I say, the UK version is done on a tight budget. I guess they don't want to waste a lot of it. Oh, I see. In the American being human, we see uh, the werewolves a lot more. Only this time, they're like CGI'd, and you can tell. But we do see a lot more of them. A lot more females and males in it, though. Not like... Like, we get, like, one or two werewolves a season in the, like, the UK version. Yeah, yeah, we, we do see a lot more werewolves in it, and I think that is what makes the US being human slightly a little more better than the UK one. I mean, the UK one is good, but the American one is kind of a little bit better. I mean, the effects are quite cheesy in some some perspectives, but... You know, I mean, they do good jobs on the vampires and the ghosts, but werewolves is somewhat a little, has to be a little more complicated. Yeah, but Master, I always wonder, in, in both versions, the werewolves only change one night a month. I thought it's three nights a month. Yeah, I would say that is what a werewolf transformation should be. The werewolves should not just be allowed to come out every month, but every three nights a month, like in Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Oh, yes, Master. Va Buffy the Vampire Slayer. She doesn't just slay vampires. You know, she slays other monsters. But the werewolves, again, they're poorly received in the show. Yeah, yeah, they are, which is a shame. I mean, in the show, it is Buffy's friend Oz who is a werewolf, and... Um, it's the first time we see him as a wolf, he looks like, well, walks upright as a wolf-like head and stuff and that, but uh, later on, he sort of looks like the wolf man, a hairy man with a wolf-like face. I don't know if it's because of the budget problem or something, I don't know, but still, uh, werewolf in Batsy, uh, again, I think are poorly received, and we don't see enough of them, I mean... We do get a few episodes where it is focused on Oz as a werewolf. Uh, the spin-off series, they had uh, a werewolf um, in Angel. Uh, I mean, we got uh, a werewolf that kept recurring in the fifth and final season, uh, Nina, but she we, we saw her turn into a werewolf. I mean, we saw her as a werewolf one full physical time in, in the first episodes that introduced her. But the other times we, we didn't get much of a good look, mainly just the before and the aftermath of her werewolf transformation. Yes, Master. Master, again, when I watch some things like that with ladies that have no clothes on, I do get a feeling down. Okay, my boy, that is enough. Like I said, we will talk about this later after the podcast is done. Not now, okay, my boy? Oh. Okay, Master, sorry, I forget, Master. It's an accept apology acceptable, my boy. Uh, so, let us carry on talking about more werewolves in, in the genre. Uh, tell me, Fagin, what is a werewolf to you? What should a werewolf be like to you? What, how would you create your own take on the werewolf myth? Pretty much like what you said, Master. You know, 
tall muscular body covered in dark grey or black fur with a wolf head and long claws and wolf-like feet and they transform three nights a month in the full moon and and they have the gold-like eyes. Oh yeah, the eyes. Uh, yeah, I do like the wolf-like eyes they get in it. Sometimes in some texts of the myth it is, uh, you know, they have um, like different color eyes due to what they are in the pack. But uh, they are merry golden eyes. Um, what else? What other you know, werewolf movies do you recommend to people when you see, when they want to know what a good werewolf flick is? Well, there's that Dog Soldiers. Oh yeah, Dog Soldiers. That is a very good British horror film, you know. It, is, it has comic relief in that. And I do like the werewolves. They're everything what I like to see in one. But um, we don't get any transformation sequences. Uh, we do get one master, but we don't actually physically see him turn. He just sort of hides under the table and we hear the sounds. But yeah, we never get to see a full physical one. I know, I don't know why, but it would have been good if we could have at least seen one. But we didn't even see one physical change. And the one time we actually had one in the movie, he went hiding under the table, which is a shame. And that is something that Blood, Bath and Beyond covered in their review of the movie. Um, Blood, Bath and Beyond, they did a review on the movie Dog Soldiers and they explained the lack of the werewolf transformation sequences. I don't know if uh, Blood, Bath and Beyond listened to this podcast, but, you know, I agree with you on that with the film uh, and Dog Soldiers. Um, I do agree with that. So, my boy, um, what other things do you see in wolves? Well, there is that real werewolf case that Dr. Purcell covered once in Random Horrors Werewolf Week last month. Why did we do it back then, Master? I don't know, my boy. I think it's because we had another subject and it didn't, you know, collide in with us. Uh, also, uh, Dr. Purcell sort of, um... Let's see, um, you know, his every other monthly show on Random Horror, like, fell in that week, so I think that's why he did it, uh, the real Wolfman case. Um, of course, yeah, like you say, a lot of fiction can be inspired by fact. Uh, I mean, in old Eastern Europe, we do still tell tales of werewolves and there are some people out there that still believe in those creatures. Oh, uh, Master, do you think that we will ever come face to face with werewolves? I mean, like you say, monsters could secretly be living, you know, among us in secret, you know, like in the underworlds of cities and, and that. Yeah, that is what some people like to spread around. Yeah. Um, oh, Master, do you think they'll do a sequel to Lesbian Vampire Killers with Gay Werewolves? <laughs> I don't think so, my boy. I mean, that was a joke that was in the film, but... And then they reference it again at the end, but I don't know. You never know. You can never tell these days. I mean, there are franchises to so, so many other things these days. We live in that age of them. Anyway, um, well, was... Oh, Master, could you tell me what lycanthropiness is? I think the word you're looking for is like anthropy. Like anthropy is when you turn into the werewolf. I mean, like we say back in the Greek myths with, uh, with Zeus and Lycaon. Um, you know, Lycaon was a fierce, evil emperor and when Zeus came down to see him he disguised as a human and he ate flesh of humans and when he tried to do this to Zeus um you know he um Zeus cursed him like I said like we said earlier in the episode yeah master that was fun story wasn't it yeah a lot of myths tend to be so um yeah, 
we are we are somewhat drawing to the end of the show, but we have a few more minutes, and then we have our letters and emails to read from our listeners. Um, Master, what about um, you know that film, Strippers vs. Werewolves? Oh boy, you and I both know that film was piss. I mean, if they did the werewolves more better, then yeah, it would not be piss, but it was piss. The werewolves in that were shizer, but the vampires were good, and Robert Inglis' cameo was the only good part about that film. But I guess it is sort of a so bad it's good film. I reckon in time to come it might get some popularity, I do not know. But, uh, yeah. Um, let's see. What about the film Wolves? Have you seen that, my boy? That is somewhat an independent film. I think it was done by Asylum. No, Master. But I'm very intrigued now to see that. Oh, uh, yeah, that is quite a good uh, indie werewolf film. I mean, we don't see much of the Lycans, but, you know, I mean, I've only watched it once, and wow, that film is ten years old now. What about the film, um with Nazi werewolves in. You like that film, don't you? Oh, yes, that film is good. Uh, I did see it in the supermarket. Uh, I did not buy the DVD because, uh, well, I just thought I could find this film, stream it or something, or search for it. I never found it, and now I can't even remember the name of it for the life of me. But it has Nazi werewolves in. Yeah, just like the dream sequence in American Werewolf in London. Oh, what about that other film we watched as well from Asylum that was on the sci-fi channel? Battle Dogs. Battle Dogs, that was surprisingly good. I mean, the werewolves looked decent enough. I mean, the CGI was very cheesy and very B-movie-ish, but I have to say, the werewolves did look kind of okay in that. I mean, we did not get, uh, I mean, we got, I mean, the, again, the werewolf thing was slightly altered, like you had to get bitten and you turn into one, but, uh, yeah, there was no full moon involved. In fact, a majority of the film takes place in the daytime. I don't know why, but it was okay, but I still think it should have had a full moon involved. In fact, I think that was more of a dog virus. Yeah, master. Well, I think we've pretty much covered everything we can, we know of the werewolf movies and the werewolf genre. So, um, that has been the discussion of werewolves. Now to, for the final part of our show, where we always do is answer a fan mail, you know, from our listeners or, or emails or something. Let's get into that now, master. Yeah, let's. Okay, so, uh, the mail from our listeners. So, first letter. Um, this one, oh, this is written in German, but I think because the majority of our listeners are probably English, I will read it out in English and translate it from what is written. Dear Dr. Fripp, is it true you once had an evil twin brother, more evil than you, and spread you with insanity gas that made you evil and insane? I thought we agreed that my personal life and family, other than Frank in here, is off limits. I'm not answering that question. Oh, it's okay, Buster. Oh, I think this one says it's for me. I think it says my name on it, Frank N. Stein. Good, you can finally read your name. Can you write it? I'm still learning. Don't forget, though, it's this hand that I'm meant to write with. Which is the rotted one. Oh, yeah. Okay, well, let's, let's read it. Um, dear Frank and Stein, what does it feel like having two hearts? I don't know. It's like having one heart because one beats each time. One beats and then the other beats because for some reason if I had one heart, my body couldn't be sustained and I'd die. And... That's why I have two hearts, because I could only get... If I had one heart, it'd beat once per second, and I needed it to beat twice per second, like a regular part. So I got two hearts. 
Did I get? Did I tell him right, Master? Yeah, you did. Very good, boy. Oh, here's another one for me, Master. Master? Hmm. Let's see, Master. You thank you for giving me life and being a father and authority figure to me. Happy Father's Day, Frank in style. Oh, this is the Father's Day card you got me for Father's Day back on the 17th. Almost just over, well, nearly two weeks ago now. Oh, yes, Master. Did Peter help you write this one? Yes, Dr. Purcell did help me write it, Master. But it's because you're like the closest thing to my dad. Are you my dad? Yeah, I, I like to think of it like that. Okay, um, let us see. Um, here's another one for you, Franken. It's an email. It says, um, yeah, dear Frank N, do you have bolts on your head like Frankenstein's monster? And if so, is it to keep your head on? Well, I don't have bolts on me. My head's securely fastened on, and didn't you say, Master, that the bolts served another purpose? Yeah, the bolts on his neck were so he can conduct electricity through them to bring the monster to life. And I hope that answers your question. Okay, next one. Uh, is a letter for is an email for me and it says Dr. Visor Flip, are you really old? Cause it is hard to tell cause you don't show your face. But the reason why I don't show my face is because I haven't got much of a face. I blew it off with a shotgun. Uh, which is a long story, so I won't bore you with it. But yeah, I'm hideous. And yeah, I am seventy six years old. My birthday was in January. Wasn't it January 31st? Yeah, it was, Frank Hen. Just at the end of Halloween in January, when I do it. Oh, uh, when, and isn't it my birthday in December, Master? Because that's when I was born, you know, through the lightning. Yeah, it was, Frank Hen, my boy. Yeah, it was. Okay, we have time for just a few more. Um, here's another email. Dear Dr. Fripp, can you do the opposite of conjoining twins by putting them together? Oh, for fuck's sake. Yeah, I do have the skills provided, but why the hell would you want to be conjoined to your twin? I... Yo, my twin bro... Oh, no, I'm not talking about him. Let's just say... Uh, I knew someone who had that desire once, and I ended up killing them. Uh, that one is from... Uh, Spike and Spider. Two twins. Hmm. Um, okay, uh, let's get back to some letters. Uh, here's a letter for your Franken. It says, Dear Franken, can you scare my bullies away? Depending on where you live and if he is willing to do it, then yeah, can you do it? If I know where this kid is and who he is and where he is, then yes. Okay, one more here and it is for me. Uh, dear Dr. Fripp, what's with the teeth on your mask? Again, it's the face thing. I put it on to create the illusion that I still have a mouth and teeth, all right? It's a long story, I know. Anyway, I will tell you. I, I guess I have to tell someone my story or something. I don't bloody know, but yeah. Okay, well, I think that's pretty much it for this month's podcast show. I want to thank you all for listening and for all uh, for your your letters and emails. Is there anything else you want to say, Franken, my boy? Uh, bye bye. Yeah, yeah. I think that's all I've got to say too. I'll feel say goodbye. So we will be back uh, next month with another topic discussion. Uh, I think uh, Random Russ has said, "Will we do a podcast for?" Uh, Shark Week in July. Oh, Shark Week? We're going to do a discussion about sharks in horror? Yeah, yeah we are, my boy. Next month, July, in, at some point, Renzum Ross is going to be hosting a Shark Week, and he's asked me if I could do a subject on the shark genre. Okay, well, yeah, that's pretty much it. Till next time.
Harvey to say goodbye again. Oh, I don't have nightmares. Yeah, that too. I think Holly Random Ross says that at the end of his horror content videos. Oh, I see. Now, my boy, the matter at hand why, f why the opposite sex or other things that are sexual have become interesting to you all of a sudden. Oh, wait, I need to turn all this equipment off.